Uh, I grew up in the mountains, in the outdoors, in this beautiful place called the Adirondacks. And there's, there's no question in my mind that experiences that connect kids with nature have profound and, and remarkable impacts on the developing brain. My kids are 13 and 15 now, and ever since they've been, they were born, uh, we've explored all kinds of amazing places out there, from high alpine lakes to mountain peaks, rivers, streams, waterfalls. Last year, my son and I had a remarkable trip, probably one of the most memorable for me. Uh, we climbed up Mount Whitney in the winter and uh, got to the summit, and he was like running across the summit granite to get to that very, very peak, and I was just overwhelmed with emotion. It was just amazing. And then we got to ski all the way back down to the car, 7,000 feet. It was incredible. When my daughter joins us, she tends to help us slow down, kind of tune into the finer things, the more beautiful things that exist around you at all times out there. So just so fortunate to have had these experiences with them. Just, just love them, and I just can't wait for the next one. It, it concerns me that our definition of outdoor sports and recreation has trended towards ultra-high risk. And, I, and I've been part of that. I've written a book on high-level skiing, helped make movies, pushing skiing to the next level. You're probably looking down at my leg right now, wondering what this brace is, right? <laughs> well, I assure you, I mean, there's a story there, for sure. But we all know the trend. You know, companies that market the highest risk are the ones that succeed. Uh, athletes who risk their lives are the ones we call legends. You know, in quiet ways, we teach our children every day that it's worth it to risk their lives doing sports that maybe, just maybe, were originally designed to just connect us with the outdoors and with each other when we're out there. I've been in this culture long enough to see nature's feedback. Every time I drive down Highway 395 in California on the eastern Sierra, I get this tightness in my chest. When we pass this area where several years ago we had to wrap up two of our friends' bodies and bring them down the mountainside. And this incident, in, addi in addition to many others, has many parents justifiably anxious about even raising their kids in this climate. I'm scared nearly every day my kids go out there and do the things that I've introduced them to. You know, when my son goes skiing in the morning and he's leaving the door and he's walking through that door and I wonder, gosh, am I ever going to see him again? You know, these are not thoughts of just an overly anxious parent. These are thoughts shared by many parents raising their kids in the current outdoor sports climate. But how could we ever take them away from such a remarkable and beautiful learning medium? I mean, the great outdoors, there's no comparison. How could we change the culture so that we one day meet the outdoors in the way it's supposed to be met? You know, many years ago, when my kids were younger, I worked with a lot of other people on trying to change the culture. We did a segment on NBC's Rock Center. Uh, we did a segment within a German documentary that was addressing energy drink marketing. We did interviews for magazines, wrote articles, started a website. But we didn't realize that cultural drift and cultural diffusion have massive momentum. You know, it wasn't going to change anytime soon. And, you know, the morbidity and mortality we were seeing was, was going to continue. And my kids, uh, you know how it is when, you're, when your parents, it just flies on by. They were going to be going to college pretty soon. So I had to kind of change my attention and focus on something that was much more manageable, which was the little family subculture you know, within our family unit and the identities of the kids within that family unit. If we were able to help our kids develop strong enough core identities and subsequently strong enough connections between us, then we could potentially ward off some of the more damaging effects of the ultra-high-risk climate out there that we live in. One of the first things that we did is we took our attention away from the external and we focused on the internal. You know, typically in sports, we think about things that are external when we're addressing safety in action sports. You know, we buy our kids helmets, we get them pads, we build jumps with better takeoffs and better landings, we enroll them in courses to make them more techni technically proficient at what they do so that they're going to be safer. But what if the most important tool is none of these things? What if the most important tool is going to keep your kids safe out there but still allow them to love the outdoors, to explore, to take reasonable risks, and to do it for a lifetime? What if the most important tool is their relationship with you guys? And you. Might sound a little far-fetched. Uh, it's not going to be foolproof. Absolutely not. But every day in my psychiatric practice, I'm reminded that the parent-child relationship is one of the most profound protective factors in warding off bad outcomes in people's lives. How we relate to them from the time they're born 
has long-lasting impacts on, on who they become and, and the decisions that they make. And when we do it well, they become independent and yet connected to those around them. You know, we, sh we shape them according to how we, how we relate with them and how we view them and how we feel about them and how we honor their presence outside of our own. But when we... Let me just reverse there for just a second. I'm just guessing that some parents are feeling a little guilty right now. <laughs> <laughs> None of us nail it 100%. Right? And nor do you want to. But as theorist Donald Winnicott said, if you do it just good enough, if you parent just good enough, you're going to help your kids develop into their own true selves. But, but when you don't, when you misidentify them or you, you force them constantly to comply to your world or you project your needs onto them on a regular basis at the expense of their own, or maybe you dismiss them altogether, you're more likely to create someone who's going to be more at the whim of their environment around them. And these processes, these processes are never really clear-cut and easy to see. And so someone without a solid core identity can be guided by external forces in very powerful and insidious ways. And so when you look at the action sports world, the outdoor sports world, you know, when you're out there, there's always some sort of audience, unless you're really a solo flyer. You know? I mean, you might be just hiking with a friend in the mountains, or maybe you're taking GoPro footage and you're posting it on social media where the world is your audience, you got to keep in mind that the audiences are wired to love excitement. They love boundary pushing, right? Especially if somebody else is doing the work for them. And so if your kids are going out into the outdoor sports world, you want to arm them with a strong enough identity that they can effectively manage that relationship with anybody who's watching. Not only that, you want them to be able to define themselves as individuals within their broader culture. So how do you do this as a parent? How do you make this happen? You know, obviously, there's going to be a lot of variables out there, right? But let's tease out a very important one, which is how you acknowledge where your child is at any moment and point of their lives. You know, you want to help them identify their feelings, their thoughts, and their imaginations. You know, it sounds kind of easy, but it's hard to do because, as we all know, you know, we're all caught up in our own worlds, we're caught up in our own thoughts and our own feelings that sometimes we actually don't even see, really see, you know, our children on the day-to-day -day basis. This is, this, is where it, this is where it starts. This is a great uh, YouTube video by Dr. Edward Tronick, great experiment that really highlights the mother and child relationship and how it starts up. Uh, it's worth watching at some point. But this is where we show them that they exist in the world. You know, they smile, and you, you smile on back, right? And they giggle, and you giggle on back. And they know that they exist. But as every parent knows, parenting gets really confusing. You know, you, you, uh, as, as it evolves, you start to kind of lose a sense of, of what you should be doing. I remember my wife and I, when my kids were young, we bought a book that told us to do this over here. And so we did it for like a year. And then we bought another book that told us to do this over here, completely different from the first one. And we felt so guilty because we thought, man, we were harming our kids all the way in between. I'm sure we're not alone, you know, with that feeling. You know, as you move forward, you want to simplify it down. You want to distill it down. If you are responsive and you validate your children enough, you're going to help them develop an identity needed for them to understand themselves in the world. And th their growth is fluid, and so you have to evolve with them, you know, as they go. And it's really like, if you allow it to be, you know, it's like watching this movie playing out right in front of your very eyes in real time. I mean, it's just incredible if you allow it to be. And so let's go through some parts of the life cycle and just see what this looks like in action. And just keep in mind, it's not all words, even though I'm using them. It's how you're emotionally in tune and how you're connected, you know, with your kids. So, so every parent knows that kids... Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe every parent doesn't know that kids at two years old, they naturally love to hog toys, right? It drives parents crazy. That parents always want the kid to share, you know. <laughs> but kids hog, hog toys at two years old. And, you know, and if you look at them and you say, how would you like it if Tony hogged his toys like you're doing right now? You're just going to instill doubt in who they truly are at that time of their lives. But if you start out by saying, gosh, I can really see it bothers you that Tony's 
He wants your toys, doesn't he? At least you, you, you let them know what that feeling is, that it's valid and, and who they truly are at that point of their lives. When your son is six years old and he comes up to you and he's like, Daddy, Daddy, I want to build a spaceship and I want to fly to Mars tomorrow. And you give him the top three reasons why that can't happen. <laughs> you know, you're just subtracting from him as a human being, right? But if you go on the journey with him, you take the adventure with him, you go to Mars with him, you know, you add to him. When your daughter's 13 years old and you feel that sense of loss because she needs her space now. <laughs> I've got a daughter. She's 13 right now. And she wants to spend all of her time with her friends. And you say, it's awful how you never want to spend time with your family anymore. <laughs> you mine away confidence in her independence, right? But if you say, gosh, I can see your friends are really important to you. I mean, it seems like it's a lot of fun. You know, you open up her world and you, ident you identify the value in her growth. You know, or when your son comes back from college and he's 20 years old and he's like, I think I'm going to pick up base jumping. And you're just like, that's not very smart. All you do is you knock him down by saying that. But if you get right in there with him and you're like, wow, I can imagine being 20 years old, that must look pretty darn fun, <laughs> you know? But I'll tell you what, the numbers aren't very good. <laughs> and I don't want to lose you. <laughs> or when your daughter is 28 years old, and she's newly married, she and her new husband are showing you their new home, they walk, walk you into the living room and they've got that one wall that they want to paint, paint bright red, and you're like, ah, oh, that's just awful. <laughs> you know? You're just chipping away at her adulthood. But if you identify to her that, hey, she's a grown-up and so are you, you can have a difference of opinion and you say, gosh, I must be an old curmudgeon because I'd never put that in my house. But, you know, you guys seem pretty excited about it, so go for it. You know, this, this never ends. It goes all the way through your lives together. And this is how they learn to trust themselves. And they also learn to trust you as an independent but connected party. You know, they know... They'll know that they have value to you, and they know that you have value to them. You know, they can disappoint you. They can excite you. They can stand up to you. So if you think about this foundation in the parent-child relationship and how it might generalize into all kinds of things in their lives, if we go into the action sports and the outdoor sports world, it might look something like this. You know, in 10 years, if your kid is hiking with this huge group of people up into the mountains, and everyone's kind of marching up into this really dangerous situation, which sometimes happens out there, and they have a little feeling about it, they're going to be aware of that feeling, and they're going to be more likely to trust that feeling. And they're going to be more likely to say something about that feeling. Or maybe they're in Moab, Utah, and they're with a big group of mountain bikers, and everybody's hitting this huge drop and cheering each other on. Your kid's like, I'm not so sure about that one. But they're like, come on, come on they're more likely to step back and, and disappoint their audience. Or if their culture is careening down this path of ultra-high risk, they're more likely to create a path of their own. You know, maybe a path that highlights how they were supposed to meet the outdoors. Because to them, I mean, the value of remaining healthy and alive, you know, the value of their attachment with you and the outdoors, it's going to far outweigh the momentary value of just sending it. Thank you, everybody.